So Google just released Gemini CLI, their own autonomous coding agent. It's completely open source. It has 1 million context window and you get 1000 queries per day for free. This is a serious competitor to both Codex and Cloud Code. And in this video, I'll show you how to set it up, how it compares to Cloud Code and how to get the most out of it. So stay tuned. All right, so just type in Gemini CLI into Google and click on the first GitHub link. This will take you to the official GitHub page from Google. So let's scroll down and I'll show you how to set up step by step because it's actually very simple, right? You don't have to be afraid if you don't know how to use the terminal or if you're not a programmer. First step, what we have to do is npm install dash g at Google slash Gemini CLI. So just copy this command, open any terminal and simply paste it in and hit enter. This will start installing Gemini on your system. Now, as they say, the only prerequisite is that you have Node.js version or above installed. So here is the link. Again, I'm gonna link the GitHub repo below the video, but if you don't have Node.js on your system, which you definitely should have, just click on this link and download Node.js, again, version 18 or higher for your system. Once you have Gemini installed, with this command, it runs for a few seconds. So then if you type Gemini into your terminal, boom, there it is, Gemini is launched. This command as well, you should probably run it uh, every morning because that's also how you keep Gemini CLI updated. But now let's move on the cursor and we're gonna be using it in an actual production ready code base, Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is what Gemini CLI is built upon. The best model from Google has a five times higher context window than Cloud for Opus and Cloud for Sonnet. And these are the only two models you can use in Cloud Code. So if you have a large code base, this might be the best coding agent for you. Anyways, once you're in cursor, just press Command J to open the terminal or Control J if you're on Windows, type in Gemini, boom, just like that, it will open. And again, if you haven't authenticated yet, you'll have to choose a theme, which you can also change anytime with um, slash theme. You, here you have a lot of options, actually. To be honest, I like the default light. So I'm going to select that. And also, it will ask you to authenticate. So if you do slash off, this is what Gemini will look like when you first run it, right? You have three different options. Login with Google, Gemini API key, and Vertex AI. The simplest one is obviously login with Google. However, there is different things you should consider. Now, as I said before, you get literally 1,000 queries per day for free. 1,000 queries per day. Most people will not hit that, let's be honest. Most people will not even get close to 1,000 prompts a day, which means Gemini CLI, for most of you, will be completely free. However, there are a few things to consider. With the login with Google, you get 1,000 messages for free, but Google will train on your data. If you use your own API key, and basically, if you pay, Google will not use your data. So again, if you use a big code base that is on a business that you do not own and you cannot share the data, then you should probably be using API key. Plus, you get the added benefit of not being randomly downgraded. If you log in with Google and you're using the 1000 free messages per day, a lot of the times, especially during the peak periods of usage, you get downgraded to Gemini 2.5 Flash. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But if you have your own startup or you just want to vibe code something from scratch, Login with Google is the simplest way. If you want to make sure you're using the best model, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and if you don't want Google to train on your data, make sure to set up your API key in Google AI Studio. Make sure you fill out your billing details. That way you're actually paying. And by the way, Gemini models are some of the most cost-effective AI models in the world. So I would recommend going with the Gemini API key unless you really want to save money. In that case, just log in with Google. Anyways, let me first close all the other cloud codes here because... I use a lot of cloud code, okay? And then also you can just rename it to Gemini CLI and pin the terminal, that way you don't accidentally close it. So this is how your workspace honestly should look like inside of Cursor. One autonomous agent here, and then maybe the file here, or if you wanna be try hard like me, a second autonomous agent on the right. So literally most of my time, I don't even have a single file open. Obviously you can still switch to the files at any time and see the code yourself, but the beauty of these autonomous coding engines is that when they are changing any of the files, they show you the differences. So really, all you need to do is have Gemini on one half of the screen, Cloud Code on the other half, and just vibe code with both of them. So since we've created a Gemini.md file, you can see above chat, it's saying using one Gemini.md file. So it's using these instructions, but this is, this is very vague, right? This is like 20 lines of prompts. This is not good at all. So what we need to do is we need to tell it locate the dot Gemini folder. And the reason for that is if we go back to the documentation, we can actually see uh, 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 if we scroll down a bit. Okay, so I found it. You need to go to docs CLI 
and then configuration md it's a bit um you know hidden but okay why are we getting errors here wait a second too many requests resource exhausted okay so uh the bad news is that they seem to be overloaded i don't know what's happening but my api key is not working let me know guys if you encounter this in the comments but i had to switch the off back to my google login right which does seem to be working so i don't know i don't know what's wrong with the api method maybe they'll patch it in the next update who knows but basically i wanted to run this prompt locate the gemini folder and the reason for that is if we go into the docs into gemini cli docs cli configuration here we'll see a very important section right so i read a lot of the docs and here this section basically shows how to use the settings.json so let's see if it located that okay we don't see a gemini folder let's see settings.json okay yeah we don't have a gemini folder so we need to create one so let's go back to the web and this is what we need to create so say okay then create this file and folder boom settings.json the reason for that is it allows us to reuse some prompts here's an example that i tweeted yesterday evening by the way if you want to get my thoughts in real time on all of these new ai updates that just come out just follow me on twitter at david andre one it's the easiest way to stay up to date with all the other tips and yeah here is the tip okay so when you create gemini okay so we need to allow this yes that gemini folder and it wants to write this file and we need to add the following context file name agents.md why because this makes gemini cli use your hopefully optimized agents.md again if you're watching my videos you will have an agents.md file especially if you're in the new society because in the new society in the classroom i have an entire step-by-step -step workshop on the ultimate codex guide which takes you from the codex setup github fundamentals my codex workflow codex variations pr review codex internet access and my new codex workflow with cloud code and cursor so yeah this is available in the classroom inside of the new society make sure to join but the whole point of this tweet is so that you don't have to write a new prompt file because it's it's getting you know overwhelming with so many files so gemini cli created this settings.json so we can just open it settings.json in the gemini folder let's put it to our second half so instead of uh, you know going with the gemini.md file which is fine so it's better than nothing for sure most people will not even bother creating any system prompt file which is terrible the better method however is to delete this file so let me just delete that boom and put this in into your dot gemini slash setting json actually make sure to remove this http i don't know how that got copied over but the json needs to look like this context file name agents.md and if we restart let's say we kill this boom clear and type in gemini but you can easily start it from any terminal just by typing gemini there it is using one agents.md file so basically this redirects gemini telling it hey instead of using the gemini.md file here is where we have the context this is the context file name that way you can use the same file and keep improving your file you know whatever you're using for codex or for cloud code and here like i have 400 lines of instructions right so instead of me having to craft a new gemini.md file from scratch i can use my highly optimized 400 line prompt for codex that i use every single day and i can instantly use that for gemini cli making it way more powerful and way more useful for my own code base so let's get to building with gemini cli of course i'm going to be building my ai startup vectl.ai which by the way if you're not using vectl this might be the easiest way to increase your productivity why because we have all of the best ai models including gemini 2.5 pro powering our ai agents that can create tasks help you complete tasks do web research using perplexity pro and so much more if you're still using outdated task management tools like todoist clickup notion just go to vector.ai sign up you can get started for completely for free take 10 minutes to move your tasks over and you will never look back the ability to chat with the best AI models that know everything about your tasks, that know what projects you have active, which by the way, in each project, you can set a custom system prompt, which this is not available in any other productivity or task management tool. These AI agents are aware of that, are aware of your user context, which allows them to be a lot more useful than just the default ChatGPT or default cloud. So again, go to vectl.ai, create an account, move your tasks over, and you will never look back. 
So what I want to do with Gemini, I want to improve the icons right here. So again, let's go back to chat. Let me refresh. So I'm adding these icons for the feedback of the chat, right? That way we can have a clear feedback loop of how good of a job the agent did. So for example, here, it did exactly what I wanted. So I would give a thumbs up. But let's say you ask create four tasks and it only creates two. Well, that would be a thumbs down. So basically I'm adding this feedback mechanism, but right now the buttons are a bit too visible, I would say. So I wrote a prompt. Your task is to improve the design of the thumbs up, thumbs down buttons in and then I tag the file, which by the way, the tagging of files in Gemini CLI is very fast. Instead of using these yellow emojis, which are way too visible, let's use the thumbs up icons from Lucid React. Let's see how good Gemini CLI is at front end design. Okay, so we got downgraded to 2.5 flash, which is unfortunate because uh, I would like to be using 2.5 Pro, but I don't know why the API key method isn't working. Uh, maybe uh, maybe it's just overloaded. I mean, they must have some crazy demand right now because they just released it. And I mean, let me know guys, if you've encountered this error with using the API key or how to solve it. I, I would be more than happy to do that. So comment below if you know how to solve that because I really don't want to be using 2.5 Flash. Okay, so 2.5 Flash failed. I mean, I'm trying to compare it to Cloud Code, but it's difficult because Gemini 2.5 Flash is nowhere near good as Cloud for Opus or Cloud for Sonnet. I cannot seem to copy, what? When I copy my prompt, it copies the response. Okay, let's just do up arrow. Oh, this box appears always. So yeah, this is one of the tools that Gemini has access to, which is the read many files tool. And it still didn't update it. I'm waiting for the instructions. Mm. Let's try Cloud Code. Like I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, Cloud Code will one shot this. Keep in mind, Cloud Code has been out for like over what, almost two months, and the Gemini CLI released literally less than 24 hours ago. So, yeah, I'm go I'm going trying to give an honest review. I'm not trying to overhype. You know, Gemini CLI has some massive advantages, and there it is. Cloud Code was able to one shot it, no problem. Like to be fair. 1 million context window, as I showed earlier, is much better than 200,000. Also, the fact that you get 1,000 free queries per day is huge for a lot of people. The fact that Gemini CLI is open source is also huge because you can literally fork it and build your own coding agent, maybe using different models, maybe customizing the prompts, whatever. So this is a huge power move from Google, open sourcing Gemini CLI, whereas Cloud Code and Codex are not fully open source, right? However, at the end of the day, what matters is how good the agent is. And when it struggles doing a simple prompt, this is nothing crazy, guys. Like changing the icons is a simple prompt. And when it struggles to do even that, whereas Cloud Code, its biggest competitor, one shots that, no problem. Yeah, Google needs to do some polishing. Again, I still believe Gemini CLI has major potential due to the factors I listed, but it's been less than 24 hours since they released it. So for now, Cloud Code is clearly better, but I would keep testing Gemini CLI and maybe like in a week it, when it gets through like a bunch of updates, maybe they'll be back, uh, especially if we can get the API method working so that we can always use Gemini 2.5 Pro, not Flash, because Flash is a much worse model. So again, comment below if you've been able to solve that API error. But for now, Cloud Code is the clear winner. If you're going to choose which to use, use Cloud Code. If you don't have any money, Gemini CLI is a great alternative. Now, if you want me to make a more in-depth video, because this was largely about the setup and the differences compared to other tools, there is a lot of stuff to cover, such as the tools within Gemini CLI. It has a lot of tools. Also, MCPs, how to connect MCPs and run it with MCP servers. Also, the memory, right? It has an interesting way of managing memory, which is like stored nodes or anything else about your project or your preferences. Also, the web search. So, Gemini CLI has the ability to browse the web. So, I'm going to say, browse the web about latest news about a new coding agent from Google. Let's see if it finds info about itself. This is a major advantage because obviously Google owns Google search, right? So they built it in into Gemini CLI so it can get documentation faster, check the web. And there is also a custom separate tool called WebFetch where you can give it a website and it gives you, it basically crawls it completely. See, it's using the Google search tool right here, latest news for coding agent Google. So yeah, there's a lot more stuff to cover. I could go on for another hour, hour, hour and a half. <laughs> if you watch my previous Cloud Code videos, you know that's true. So if you want me to go even more in depth into Gemini CLI, comment part two. If I see a lot of comments saying part two, I will make a very in depth advanced video on Gemini CLI and post it in the next week or so. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. 
if you haven't already, go to Vectelaria and sign up, especially if you have a team. If you're a small or medium-sized business, join the team plan. Everybody on your team will have access to the cutting-edge AI models in the app. Let's be honest, it's very hard to get your employees to use AI tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, if they're not built in into the software that you're using. This is the problem that Vectel solves. Plus, as I showed you, you can have custom system prompts for each project. So let's say, let's say you have a software project right here and you say, our tech stack is this, this, this. The current focus of Q3 is blah, blah, blah. And you put in focus for each project, you save it. And when you select that project, which by the way, you can easily favorite it, the AI agents will know what the focus of that project is and they will adapt the responses to that for all people in that project. Plus, if you go with the Vectal team plan, you can also give a custom system prompt to every person on your team so that Vectal knows, okay, this person is a video editor, this person is a developer, and it adapts the responses to them. Moving your team to Vectal has to be the easiest way to instantly boost the productivity of all the people on your team. So simply go to Vectal.ai, get the team plan, move your team over, and suddenly you became an AI first company. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of Gemini CLI. And if you want me to make another video on it, comment below part two and I'll make it happen. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful, productive week. See ya.